Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. We are continuing on with our exploration of the Outlook, uh, I guess, ex you know, exporting of different Excel objects. So we've already done Excel charts. We're now gonna move on to Excel ranges. And in this particular video, we're gonna take a single Excel range and copy it over to an Outlook email that we create all from within Excel VBA. So. We're gonna get started. The goal is to take this range right here, copy it over to uh, an email that we create in VBA. And then naturally in the next video, we'll do multiple ranges. So we're gonna go up to our developer tab. Uh, we're gonna go over to Visual Basics, click that. You're now in your VBA editor. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to insert a module. Uh, I already have one inserted, so I'm not gonna insert another one. Once you have your module inserted, we're gonna have to enable two object libraries, one for Outlook and one for Word. So these will allow us to basically reference these particular object models from within the Excel VBA editor, and we also get some added benefit with IntelliSense. Uh, the reason we have to enable two different object libraries is because within Outlook, uh, it actually leverages the word object model. So if you actually look at the content of an email, that's actually a word object model. And so if we wanna be able to reference that content, we have to declare it as a word object. So to enable these libraries, we're gonna go up to our ribbon bar right up here. We're gonna go to tools, references, and then I've already used these libraries, so they're already enabled, but you can see there's Outlook, Word. If you don't currently have them enabled, scroll down to M. The first one for Outlook will be right over here. And then the next one for Word will be somewhere right around here. And then all you gotta do is you make sure there's a check in the box, so you just click it, the check will appear, now it's enabled. You might see a different number, that's just as referencing the version of the object library that you're currently working with. Regardless of what we're gonna be doing in today's video, everything should work fine, regardless of what version you're on. Once you've done that, you can press OK. And now we can actually start writing our subroutine. So we're gonna say sub uh, copy range to Outlook. And I'm gonna put single, so I have a little note to myself. All right, let's start declaring our variables. They're gonna come in three different sets. We're gonna have one for Outlook, one for Word, and then one for Excel. So we're gonna declare Outlook variables. The first one will be called the Olook app, and this will be our Outlook.application. So this is the actual application of Outlook, and we have to store that in an object so that way we can reference it later in our script. And then from there, we're gonna declare another uh, object variable. It's gonna be an Outlook item, and so this will be Outlook dot item, or sorry, not items, mail item, my apologies. And basically a mail item is just an email. It's really as simple as that. And so this will create a reference that we can then play around with the actual email itself. Okay, and then the next one is gonna be called the Olook Inspector. And then this one is going to be an Outlook inspector object. So the inspector is basically the window in which we inspect our email. So it's really just the, the window in itself that contains the email. That's at least the best way I would describe it to you. Um, and so we want to be able to uh, basically create a reference to that inspector. And then with inside the inspector, there's an editor that is referencing the word object model. And so Basically, we have to create a hierarchy that first goes to the inspector and then to the editor. Um, but that does it for the Outlook variables. Now we're gonna go on to our Word variables. So we're gonna declare Word variables. The first one is gonna be called the O Word doc. And then as you guessed, it is a Word document. So <clears throat> the content inside the email is considered a document. That's the best way I would like to describe it. I think it's the easiest one to wrap your head around. So we're gonna consider that a document and then within our documents, we can have ranges. And so we're gonna say, we're gonna declare an object that will represent a range within our document. And so that is actually gonna be a word dot range. It's very important that you put word before range because that's referencing a word range and not an Excel range. And then finally, we're gonna declare Excel variables. There's only one, but 
it's going to basically represent the range that we want to export. So it's a rain, range object and it's called exc range, so Excel range for short. Okay, after that, we need to create an instance of, what is it, of Outlook, but we're gonna assume something a little bit different here because I know a lot of people have Outlook uh, open in the background a lot of the time. So we're first gonna go and try to basically fetch the active instance of Outlook. Uh, but if it doesn't exist, we're gonna actually create a new instance. And so we have to write our code a certain way so that way as we go and fetch it, if it doesn't fetch it, naturally it's gonna return an error. We want our code to continue even if it encounters that error. So what we're gonna say at the top is we're gonna say on error, resume next. And so basically this will just have us keep going even if we encounter that error. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the active instance of Outlook. And so how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna set our Olook app equal to the get object. And then it's gonna be a comma. And then we just gotta put in the name. And so we're gonna say Outlook.application. So this will go out and try to retrieve that Outlook application if it's currently open. If it's not, it's gonna return an error. And so basically what we're gonna say is if there's an error, then create a new instance of Outlook. So if error, create a new instance of Outlook. And so I'm gonna say if my error, and so there's actually like an error object within the VBA editor. Um, and we can consider that an object and it actually has a property associated called number. And if that error number equals 429, and basically that's just the error that says, hey, tried getting it, couldn't get it, then we're gonna actually do something. We're gonna say, okay, well first, we're gonna clear our error, just to be good about that. So that way if we get a new error, you know, it's something different. And then we're gonna create a new instance of Outlook. And so we're gonna set our Olook app equal to a new Outlook.application. And then I can close my if statement. So again, really at this point, we're just gonna create a new instance of Outlook. If we, I'm sorry, we're gonna create a new instance if we encounter the error when we try to go and fetch an active instance. So uh, we're gonna first try to go get the active instance. If there is no instance, then it will create a new instance of Outlook for us. That's all we're doing. And then from there, now that we have basically a working application, we can create the email. So we're gonna now create create a new email. And so we're gonna set our Olook item equal to the Olook app. And then in the Olook app, Olook app, there is a create item method. And the create item method, we can create a different Outlook item. So there's a journal item, appointment item, contact item. I want a mail item. And so I'm gonna close off my brackets and that will now create a new email for me. And then after that, we're gonna create a reference to the Excel range that we want to export. So we're gonna create a reference to the Excel range that we want to export. And so we're gonna set the Excel range object, the one that we declared up above, it's gonna hold a range. And we're gonna set that equal to sheet one and then range B2 to C7. Perfect. So keep in mind, I'm using the code name of the sheet and not the actual like, you know, worksheets or in passing through the index or the name. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is a more stable, um, you know, method. The reason why is even if we change the name of our worksheet, even if we change the order of our worksheet, this code will stay the same. So we can always assure that even if we've changed the name or the location of our worksheet, it will stay consistent. And that's very important because I might want to always export the range from sheet one that is B2, C7. If you ever wanna get this little code ID, you just simply go right over here to the VBA Project Explorer, and then it's right there. So if you just click on any of these worksheets, the little section right before it is the actual code ID. <clears throat> so now that we've created a reference to the Excel range that we um, 
we want to copy over. We're now going to work with the actual mail item itself. And then we're going to do things like put in some information about who we're sending it to, a CC, a subject header, a body, display it. And then we're going to get all kind of the more, I guess, complicated stuff like the inspector and stuff like that. So we're going to say with our OLOOK item, and I'm going to close off my with statement, and then I'm going to go down a little bit. We're going to uh, define some basic information. Uh, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to define who we're sending it to. Well, I have a fake email that we're just going to put in. So we're going to put abc uh, at xyz.com. And this has to be passed through as a string. And then we can do a cc. Again, I'm just going to put in that same one. So at abcxyz.com. And then I'll put in a subject header. And then I'll say, hey, this is all of the ranges from my workbook. Okay, and then I'll put a body section, so the actual um, body section of our email. And then with that one, I'll put here is my range. Perfect. And then from here, I actually want to display my uh, email. So I want to display email. So I'm going to call the display method. And then what we got to do is we have to get the active inspector. So I'm actually going to run it from right here just to kind of explain what the inspector really is. Okay, so as you can tell, it created an email. Here is our header, you know, from to CC, you know, subject line, and then my body range. What you're currently looking at is your inspector, is the best way I can describe it. So it's really this window right here that we're actually inspecting the email in. And then from here, we need to get the editor. And so the editor is basically, it's not really this section, but it's where the content lives. And so really, when we're filling out the information in this like little content window, it's leveraging a word editor, which is then in itself leveraging the word object model. And so we want to get access to that particular word editor. And so how we do that is we get our active inspector and then we get um, the actual uh, the object from that, so the actual word editor. So I'm going to close this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my inspector, so get the active inspector and I'm actually going to set that equal to the object variable so I'm going to set the olook inspector equal to the dot get inspector so the get inspector is part of the actual mail item very important to keep that in mind that's why I was kind of able to do this shorthand way is because this is part of the um, the actual mail item itself the inspector and then in this is kind of, again, using that object variable. Uh, and then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to get the word editor from within the inspector. So get the word editor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my Outlook. I want to make sure I spell it right. Outlook word doc equal to the Outlook inspector. And then there's the word editor property about it. So we can just get that property. And so really, this is in a sense kind of like the document, if you want to think about it. So it's the actual like document within the editor itself. And now that we have this document, we can get different parts of it. So we can get basically the range within this document. So that's what we're going to do next. We're now going to get our range from the document. So we'll call it specify the range in the document. And so I'm going to set my word range equal to my word doc. And then I'm going to go in the application property. And then I'm going to go into my active document property. And then I want the content property. So this is all the content within my document. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this little method called well, I guess it's not really a method. I have to remember again. <laughs> I haven't used it in a while. Collapse, so the collapse method. And so basically this will collapse our range to where we're just really focusing on one section of it. Uh, and so we're gonna say direction equal 
word collapse and so this will go to the end of our range okay so now that we've done that uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a little bit of space between my uh, my body and my my, uh, my actual image that I'm gonna paste in there so I'm gonna add a new paragraph so I'm going to add a new paragraph and this is really just to make sure that it doesn't overlap each other uh, and then from there I'm gonna insert a break and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my O word range equal to the O look editor so that again this is again kind of the uh, what is it the word document itself and then we're going to go into the paragraphs. Sorry, my notes almost fell. And then we're going to call the add method. So the paragraphs collection is just a collection of all the different paragraphs in our document. And here we're adding a new, uh, new paragraph, basically. And then after we've done that, we're going to then insert a break. So we're going to call the insert break method. And so now this will add a, basically a new little section between our, our body paragraph and uh, well, our body section and then the actual image itself. And so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the range. So we'll say Excel range dot copy. Yeah, because we haven't copied it yet. And then we're going to paste it. And so we're going to say O word range dot paste special and then we're going to do data type is equal to word paste meta I can't remember how yeah meta file picture it's such a long one I can never remember that one <laughs> okay so but that's pretty much everything so this should take our excel range and then it should copy it into our email as a picture so let's try it out and see what we get Perfect. So it did exactly that. And then keep in mind too, um, it did add like a little space in between our body section and the actual uh, image itself. And I'll do another video of like how we can format documents and stuff like that. That'll kind of be a combination of Outlook and the actual Word VBA videos as well. But this is again just kind of saying, hey, you have an image and you just want to, you know, export it into, uh, into Outlook. So that actually does it for today's video. So if you have any questions about kind of what we were doing or, you know, why I kind of wrote things a certain way, you know, please put those comments down below. Um, also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. And then also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So we're going to continue our exploration of Outlook, Word, um, and actually started doing some more PowerPoint stuff again because some people were kind of asking about different things. And then also, you know, Python, it's, you know, different points too. I'm really trying to work on that YouTube API. Uh, it's actually coming along a lot nicer than I was expecting. That's always nice when it works good. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.